Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the common ion effect. And here we're going to illustrate it with an example. So we've talked in previous lectures about weak acid dissociations. And just as a review, you know, a strong acid like hydrochloric acid is something that completely dissociates. So a one-way arrow here to H plus and Cl minus. But a weak acid like acetic acid, we use a double arrow because there's an equilibrium and there's going to be a mixture then in the aqueous solution of both the acid itself and its donated proton and conjugate base. And so all three of these things exist at equilibrium. Now, what if in this solution, in a beaker of this acetic acid, there's already something else? There's commonly complex mixtures in uh, biology and, and chemistry. And so what if there's already some sodium acetate in this solution? And this sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte, kind of like a strong acid, such that it dissociates to make this sodium ion and the acetate ion. The sodium ion is going to be a spectator, but this acetate ion is then going to affect the equilibrium of the weak acid. And so the presence of this acetate that's floating around in here because it's dissociated from sodium acetate is going to affect how much this acetic acid that is being added to this solution or that's already existing in this solution is going to want to go to the right and dissociate, right? Because there's already this acetate ion there. And so the presence of this acetate ion will actually shift the equilibrium according to Le Chatelier's principle, right? We remember this from previous lectures that Le Chatelier's principle says in an equilibrium, what if I add a bunch more product? Well, the reaction responds by shifting back to the left. And so the amount that this acid dissociates or moves to the right is going to be lessened if we already have this acetate ion around. And so this is called the common ion effect. If there is an ion already in the solution that is uh, an ion that uh, is in common with the ion that's part of the dissociation, right? So here and here, these are the same ion. These two reactions have this ion in common, right? And so the common ion here would be the acetate ion, and the effect then is the presence of this common ion shifts the equilibrium back to the left in this weak acid dissociation. It doesn't really affect the strong electrolyte because it's a strong electrolyte. It goes all the way to the right, that equilibrium is not really affected. So that is the common ion phenomenon. And it's all really a manifestation of Le Chatelier's principle. And now if we think about shifting back to the left, there's going to be less H+. Okay? In this example here, the common ion effect means less H+, and so a higher pH. So if you want to talk about the pH of a weak acid solution like acetic acid, the pH is going to be lower, more acidic when it's by itself compared to when it's in a solution in which there is this common ion. Okay, so that's really the common ion effect. We can sort of uh, write it out more strictly uh, by the book definition. Whenever a weak electrolyte, so it doesn't have to be acetate, right? But any weak electrolyte <clears throat> and a strong electrolyte contain a common ion uh, together in a solution, the weak electrolyte ionizes less than it would if it were in a solution alone. Okay, so the weak electrolyte here would be my acetic acid. That's my weak acid. The strong electrolyte here would have been sodium acetate. And the common ion that they have is this CH3COO minus. This affects the acid-base equilibria that we're talking about here, and it also affects solubility, but that'll be part of a future lecture. So let's take a look at an example. How might you calculate this? Now that we understand the concept, think about a pH of a solution that is made by having acetic acid and sodium acetate together in an aqueous solution. So here are the numbers 0.3 moles of each in a one liter solution. So they're also going to be 0.3 molar. The Ka free acetic acid is shown here. The way you approach these problems is just like all of our equilibrium problems. We write the reaction 
we write down our expression for, in this case, acid dissociation or equilibrium constant in general, and then we make an ice chart. So for this reaction, previously, we would have zeros for all of the products. That, that's what we're used to writing. But for the common ion products or the common ion problems, your product is already present, right? So we have to attribute this 0.3 moles of sodium acetate as really, since it's a strong electrolyte, 0.3 moles of the acetate ion CH3COO minus. So this number from sodium acetate goes in to my product initially, okay? Now, my reactant here, the acetic acid, initially is also 0.3 moles in this example. These numbers aren't always going to be the same. They happen to be both 0.3 here, but they're usually gonna be different, okay? So the ice chart is different because usually we would just write an initial concentration of a, in this case, weak acid, and assume it's zero for everything else, but now this is a more complicated solution. So there's zero of H+, plus, but there's 0.3 moles of this acetate ion. Now, because the reaction is separated by the double arrow here, and H plus is zero, then we know both of the products here are going to increase while the reactant decreases. So that's why we have a negative X for reactants, positive X for products. We know this because zero can't go any less. So the product side has to increase. We can't make any less H plus if we have zero, you can't have negative concentration. So the right side here, the products must go up. And now for our equilibrium amounts, well, we just add down the table. So 0.3 minus X for the reactants, X for the H plus, and 0.3 plus X for the acetate ion. And so now you can plug these numbers into our equilibrium expression here and try to solve, oops, this one goes over here, the reactant, this one goes over here, the product, and the X for H plus. Okay, so we could show that on a separate slide. This is what your equilibrium constant, the acid dissociation constant expression would now look like. Ka equals products over reactants. Now, here's a trick that we will test, but usually works for these weak acid dissociations. If X is very small, and it should be, right? The whole concept of common ion is that this presence of acetate is going to cause a lower production of H+, right? That's what we said back here, that the pH is going to be higher because there's going to be less H+, in this common ion environment. So if X is really, really small here, and X is the amount of H+, right here, but it also represents how much the other ions are changing, these X's are probably very small. And so if you take a number like 0.3 and subtract from it a really, really tiny number, the resulting number is still 0.3. And same if you're adding or subtracting it, it's still 0.3. So if you add X here and it's a really small X, 0.3 plus a really small number is still 0.3. 0.3 minus a really small number is still 0.3. So those X's don't really change things. We don't neglect this X because that will change the mathematics. So if we eliminate these X's and assume X is very small, we can neglect X where it is being added or subtracted. And so in this case, this makes the math easy because 0.3 and 0.3 will just disappear. And my X amount is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. Okay, if I was asked here, and I think I was to calculate the pH, well, this X value is the H plus concentration. And so my pH just becomes negative log of that 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. And that then is my pH 4.74. Now, the rule of thumb that I use in my classes for can we neglect X is you neglect it when it's added or subtracted. And then at the end, you do this little test, okay? And the little test is you can disregard X if your value of X you calculate at the end, 1.8 times 10 to the negative five, is that less than 5% of whatever you're neglecting it with respect to? So here, these numbers are the same 0.3 and 0.3. Usually you would just pick the smallest number because if it passes the rule for the smaller number, it's gonna pass the rule for the larger number. 
Here, they're both the same, but the rule is, is it less than 5% of your 0.3? And indeed, yes, it will be because, you know, 5% of 0.3 is gonna be a number that's still larger than this number. So this X is suitably small that yes, safe to neglect because it passes this 5% rule. So we neglect it, but we test this assumption at the end to make sure that this number that we've calculated based on neglecting the X up above is safe to do. So with that in mind, let's take another crack at a practice problem shown here. Feel free to pause the video here and try this one yourself before I go on and solve it. Okay, calculate the equilibrium fluoride ion concentration and pH of a solution that is 0.2 molar in HF and 0.1 molar in HCl. This HF here, we realize is a weak acid. The HCl here is a strong acid. So we have a weak electrolyte and a strong electrolyte. Now, before we even begin, let's think about what is the common ion? What ion is in common between these two things when they're dissociating? Well, HF, we know as a weak acid will have a double arrow and create H plus and Cl minus, uh, F minus, excuse me. HCl, we know, is a strong electrolyte and completely dissociates. But the ion they have in common here is the H plus, right? Before, in our example, and in this practice problem, the common ion was the conjugate base, but it doesn't have to be, as we see in this example, the common ion can be H plus. So let's set up our ice chart and proceed. We'll make our three rows and label this initial change equilibrium. So we know HF initially is 0.2 molar, 0 0.20 molar. The H plus is our common ion. That is 0.1 molar. And remember, if it's 0.1 molar HCl, that's equivalently, since it all dissociates, the amount of H plus. So our initial H plus here is 0 0.10 molar. The initial amount of F minus is zero. Okay, now since the zero is on the product side, these, this uh, product side, these are gonna go up and the reactant side is going to go down. And so our equilibrium value should look like this. and our Ka 6.8 times 10 to the negative four is products over reactants, 0.1 plus X times X over 0.2 minus X. Now this is the expression we have to solve for X. Here again, we're going to do our neglecting of X here and here, wherever it's added, it's subtracted, and solve 0.1 over 0.2, we can bring those to the other side. We can divide both sides by 0.1. We can multiply both sides by 0.2. The x's we've neglected. And so x will equal 0 0.00136. Okay. Is this x less than 5% of the smallest number? 0.2 and 0.1. So is it less than 5% of 0.1? And the answer is yes. 0 0.00136 is indeed less than 0 0.005. So that passes the test and neglecting X was safe. And so I have my X concentration here, but be very careful, right? This equilibrium fluoride ion concentration that is what X represents. If you're calculating the pH, which we might do and have to do here, a lot of students will just take negative log of this X because they're used to this X representing the H plus. But here, there's H plus from the HCl. So this X represents my concentration of fluoride at equilibrium. But my pH, is going to be negative log of not just X, but 0.1 plus X. So 0 
plus this small number. gives me 0 0.10136. And so the negative log of that gives me my pH, which here is going to be 0 0.994. And so that's a very low pH, but that kind of makes sense because it's a weak acid and a strong acid mixed together. That's probably gonna be pretty dang acidic, okay? The HCl, the pH of, of just this HCl by itself, okay? is one, so it only gets a little bit more acidic from the presence of HF, and that makes sense because the amount of H plus that it's adding from the HF is this small number. Okay, so the final answer here is the pH is 0.994, and the F minus equilibrium concentration is 0.00136. So that's the practice prob problem for common ion. And you can get more practice with these types of problems. You might be asked to instead calculate a percent ionization, which is this final H plus over the initial acid times 100. That can be done as well. But this is enough practice for this video and the concept of common ion overall. In future videos, we'll get into discussing buffers, which are mixes of these weak acids and their conjugate bases. And after that, we'll proceed and do lots of practice problems uh, on that and, and get into actual titrations, which is what we're working towards in this lecture series. But that'll do it for common ion problems and this lecture. See you next time.